Hi, uh, my name is Michael Tan. I'm a visual artist. Um, I received my undergraduate study from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago in the United States. And then I also did an MA in Photography and Urban Culture at Gold Smith. Um, prior to my pursuit uh, of my career in the arts, uh, I was actually a science student. I got bored of science and I decided to answer this calling to be an artist designer kind of person. And that's why I kind of like embarked on this journey into the pursuit of creative studies. Um, so, as I began my practice, I wanted to be a graphic designer, but somehow through my education, I guess, my education in the art school um, really opened up ways of thinking about what a creative person can be and what a creative person can do. So that led me through to a different kind of um, philosophical kind of pondering about what a creative person can do. So while I was doing my undergraduate study, um, I became interested in photography. I don't think I'm a photographer, but I'm someone who's really interested in how meaning and communication can be orchestrated and constructed um, through the use of image, um, space, and text. So I guess um, it is based on this interest in image, text, and space that has led me to um, the kind of practice that I do as an artist right now, um, where I do occasionally do um, photographic installation kind of work because I, I think um, I'm interested to explore this relation of dynamics between image, space, movement, and text, and also opening up to how people might read images and how people might make sense of images. Right, I think when I started my creative journey and my creative career, I wanted to be a graphic designer. But I guess I was one of those designers who are very interested in the notion of boundaries between um, design thinking and art making and communicating um, world perspective. So I think subsequently, um, from my design work, I start to realize um, there's this relation that design can actually um, have with society around. So I also started creating um, urban graphic design and more installation way of engaging text and image in an urban environment to actually get people to start to think about um, the urban environment, the urban condition in terms of um, social inequality. Um, so in, in this work, uh, where I was looking into the idea of um, urban infrastructure, really urban infrastructure as a fine escape, um, how that could actually serve as a, a temporary housing for people who are homeless. So I guess this is some of the touch point of how human have kind of like so crept into my work. And so subsequently, um, in my venture, I decided that while well, I want to do more of a fine art kind of venture, but still kind of like using design thinking to inform how I make decisions in, in terms of my image making and also in terms of uh, the crafting of this artistic encounter and experience that led me to continue to expand my work to look into video installation, to look into uh, photographic installation, uh, to create an experience where it then becomes sort of an encounter uh, for my work, for my mind, for my thinking to actually meet with um, the viewers. So uh, for this work, for example, repercussion, uh, which was done during my undergraduate studies, um, we were trying to talk about uh, the impact of urban noise um, that comes out in our subconscious um, as we go into a dream. So this video installation um, is made up of like three monitors that are run you know, in a random manner that shows flickerings of um, urban scenes that try to suggest uh, the idea of the repercussion of the urban noise um, that came out. Um, and I think because I was moving geographically between different countries, I think at that point, um, there was also a lot of tension about migration, about making you know, a sense of belonging, my own identity. And I think um, through that period of time, around you know, 2004, when I was transiting between places, uh, I guess I became very interested in the notion of migration, and also thinking about belonging, uh, thinking about growing up, thinking about you know, my identity as a child. So I think that has led me through um, a very conversational way of engaging with the photographic medium, of using the photographic medium um, as a basis for me to actually mirror my thought and to also use as a dialogue, you know, sub um, dialogue method for, for me to actually contemplate to issues of migration. For example, in this work, uh, Primitive Longing, where I collected um, images of grass um, through the internet by inviting my friends to submit um, images of grass. So in a very participatory way, um, I also look into how um, the internet could also actually be a source for image, not necessarily just the camera. But also thinking about you know um, the different kind of network, the kind of geographical boundaries, um, and the boundlessness of this image sourcing that could actually be made possible um, through the use of image making through an interactive participatory way of interact um, through, through the internet. So I thought that was interesting for like collecting grasses. So building on the idea of grass, you know, the sense of belonging, the grass is greener on the other side, creates a um, visual metaphor. So this installation then takes all these images of the grass, and then it's being represented um, in the 
yesterday in uh, Hong Kong, where then people can actually move from different patches of grass, and as they move between the patches of grass, I guess the narration, the narrative that I was interested in was to actually get them to think about why we move from different patches as they would, as they look at different uh, images of the grass, and also at the same time try to tease them to think about um, why they, why why we move on, why we you know migrate, and the issue related to that. Um, so I guess subsequently, um, that also that moving also led me to want to explore my own relationship with my parents. So once again, I went back into photography uh, because I think there's something um, that is potent and tangible uh, in the photographic medium. Like this idea of growing up and growing out of the shell um, and how that allowed me to think about the kind of inherent tension that I was facing when I came back to Singapore uh, in terms of trying to negotiate parent and kid kind of relationship. So that spurred me and kind of inspired me to want to create this work where I invite people to think about the notion of distance uh, based on my own personal reflection of uh, distance between parent and kid. Um, so then I look into archival photos of my family album and I start to pull out images of myself um, with my parents and I start to digitally crop myself out from uh, the image. So I guess uh, con like conceptually and I guess symbolically, you know, I'm trying to show the empty shell of myself, you know, and how the hands of the parent is still not like holding it on. And as an installation, um, these little pictures are left wandering, you know, in an environment that people can actually walk through. And as they walk through this environment, um, they'll encounter this little picture, which then invite them to think about, you know, the, the kind of intimacy that's being lost as we grow up, you know, and how sometimes our parents kind of like hold on to us um, as kids, right? Um, so, so I guess um, the way I approach art, right, the way I approach art making is um, I see it as a reflecting pool, right, a, reflecting, a mirror that I use to look at myself and while looking at myself in the mirror, it also directs um, the view within the mirror, you know, it captures what is also around me. So then by looking into the mirror, the reflection of the mirror, um, it also allows me to reflect on things that are going on and I think um, through the making of work every time I feel that um, it does lend a certain kind of perspective, a certain kind of understanding to my relation with the world and I think in this process it is also, I discovered, right, it is a, it is a way of unloading, of letting go and as I unload and I let go, I think there's that sense of catharsis um, that kind of like free me up emotionally also and I guess that feeling is something that I do hold on to from time to time um, and then I think this consciousness about what the art can do for me as a human being in terms of um, it being therapeutic, it being uh, a space for me to actually offload, right, uh, became quite important. And um, in 2011, I actually created this work called Dancing with Dad, uh, which tries to capture my experience as a caregiver, um, as my dad felt you, you know, during the years, uh, and how I as a caregiver was trying to cope. But I guess as I was doing this work, I was, so, I was also interested in how um, through art, right, through the encounter with art, we can actually open up um, stories about the caregiver who might be struggling, who might be feeling you know, a sense of difficulty and challenge as they are coping to take care of people, especially their loved ones who are sick. Um, I think the work also tries to open up conversation about the limit of medication. So at that point when medication fails, what are we left with? I think the work um, invites um, ponderings of this sort to do actually happen um, in this work. So I guess beside this opportunity to unload, you know, um, my frustration, uh, my dilemma um, as a caregiver, I think um, as the work stands by itself, I guess there are many folds that goes into the work, not just from my own personal account of what I've been through, but I guess um, somehow the work kind of like took on its a life on its own, you know, and I start to realise that this story is no longer just about my own story. Um, it also involved uh, my dad, um, you know, in terms of looking at him throughout his lifespan, how he was a young person and then where he is right now and what we are doing with him. And also it looked into uh, the aspect of um, the love relationship between my parents in terms of, you know, in this very trying times of, you know, my mom having to juggle work with taking care of dad. But the strength that came forth and, and that is demonstrated by her and through this process I think uh, were things that were being captured through this process and I guess um, through this presentation of the artwork um, 
I guess I'm actually inviting people to hear my story right on a very primary basis. I think the other fold that I wanted to do through a very special installation of the work was to allow the person to actually journey through the story so that uh, upon encountering each story, they are actually given space through their own movement, through their own encounter with the image to choose whatever space, whatever image that they want so that you know by looking at the image, uh, the image will actually engage them to think about some of the issues that I have. Um, and this work also worked with um, written text where I actually write short poetry uh, to just complement or to use it as a trajectory point to lead people to think about things that the picture may not say but maybe through the synergy of text and image how that could open up ways of thinking and ways of reflecting. Um, so what I did was, you know, I kind of like um, created this installation of photographic image um, that incorporates archival image, um, image that was shot and also text to uh, get people to think about the medical condition and also I think what is clear, what is kind of like really strong in the work is this invisible life of people you know, who are taking care of their loved one who is sick um, that is not usually visible, it became visible in this process which I thought is very important and I think that itself, uh, besides being a catharsis on my end where I'm sharing the story, I think it also offer a sense of support and encouragement for people uh, who will come to the encounter with this work. Um, so this book takes the viewer through the journey of this young man who is my dad, who gave birth to me, who held my hand when I was growing up, and then somehow through you know, um, this point, um, the tune of life changed, so the dance tune changed. So the idea of dancing with that um, is also a reflection on how this dance has changed between my dad and the kind of adjustment that I have to make because the tune has changed. So then as the tune changes, we have to kind of like figure out this new step in terms of taking care, in terms of growing together, in terms of living together. I think um, those are folded into the notion of um, the, the, the idea of dance, you know, and then how uh, the dance also becomes something that is supportive. The dance becomes something that is reciprocal in the sense of how giving care also allows me to learn and deepen my experience, you know, about myself and also about, you know, um, parent and child kind of relationship. And I think, well, in a way, I guess the work also touches on moral issue. So I think starting from that very cathartic work, I guess there are many folds that kind of like went into the work that, that starts to take form um, as the work developed. Um, so what I did through this process was um, I started photographing my dad, you know, uh, through a remote control camera. So, you know, I would photograph him in you know, his daily settings, um, the kind of activities that I do with my dad. Um, images that might be invisible, but uh, it's now being uh, revealed to the public. And I guess this revelation, I would say it's actually one of the most challenging work that I've done as an artist because uh, this is one of the work where I have to really come close to bear my own personal life and really kind of like flesh it out to the public. And I guess, you know, in this process of fleshing out this private life because of the condition of my dad, it also uh, opens up ethical questions about, you know, why do you photograph your dad in a particular way? But I guess at the end of the day, uh, as an artist, I guess, it's important to stay true to what the vision of the work is and what the intention of the work is, which is to really um, engage people to think about life, think about relationship, think about caregiving. I think I hold truth to, to that, you know, that intention in this work, um, which I think uh, is of value to, to me at least to, to answer to you know, um, the ethical part of the question. And also, because by flagging out you know, your very personal, intimate life, I think um, this requires some sort of courage and I was actually quite hesitant when I was preparing the work. Uh, I do question myself, why am I doing this? Uh, why am I photographing you know, and, and showing people in public? But I guess after much reflection and interrogation and talking to people, um, I guess those understanding starts to give you confidence in terms of you know, just showing the work. And I must say I did not regret creating this work uh, because I think that the kind of response that I get from people I think this is one of the most. Uh, I said I think it's one of the exhibition that I put up that have gathered a lot of tears. I've seen people like just cry while I was there. Uh, my own family members broke down as they saw the pictures, and I think uh, yeah, there were caregivers among people uh, who look at the work and they broke down. So I think the catharsis not only happened at the level of me creating the, the work, but I guess that the landing of this shoulder, you know, this supporting care hand that the work, you know, as an artwork stands. It extend their hands out as a catharsis for people who might be going through that same situation and because they can relate and if they do have an emotional outpour, uh, I guess it is what, you know, um, that the life 
of the work itself that kind of like starts to pass on to um, the people which starts from this very core intention of wanting to share, um, wanting to heal, um, which is the point that I started off the project. Um, so, besides the public going, uh, you know, my that they can crowd also can, I think that also lend them uh, a, a layer of understanding uh, about my dad's life, about his family life, uh, which opened up, you know, a certain kind of intimacy to, to, to people who know him also. So, um, I guess this work, right, um, kind of like prepare me to think about my dad's mortality because uh, he's sick, he's old, and at some point he will die, and in fact he died, like recently. Um, and I think um, the other layer of catharsis that happened in this work was actually uh, the documentation of the work and you know, the, the, the book that I created out from this project um, that became an object, uh, a therapeutic object, right? When I look back into the book um, as I was grieving, I was kind of like um, mourning over the passing of my dad. I guess this then became that little treasure that I can actually hold on to in terms of the memory, the process, the emotion. That it's all being translated and materialized, and you know, like it became something that is tangible that I can go on to. So I guess the work then lent itself, you know, as a therapeutic form in another form, but right? not just in the creating process, but as an artifact. How it returned a favor for me at the end of the day to create some sort of a closure at the end of the day, um, and then moving from that, um, going back into responding um, to how image creating could help to alleviate you know certain kind of stress um, actually shortly after the passing of my dad I became very sensitive to the light that's happening around in my mom's place and I started photographing because I think that was that urge and that desperation to want to claim and want to find you know uh, this uh, life that suddenly kind of like disappeared suddenly that became intangible and I guess the reflection of the light the, the notion of the light in the space somehow called me to you know want to capture that too i guess in a way it also reflects that irony of not being able to the, the irony of the aggressive you know when someone is done with life here it's, it's, it's a very strange feeling i think one will only can one can only understand it when you go through that process of you know, what i mean by the, it's just that split second and what you can touch becomes something that is intangible you know and i guess while I was pursuing that light, I was also trying to claim this intangible when I guess giving form through the photographic project. And I kind of like went on to photograph all this uh, still light. And I guess looking back at this, you know, that the idea of what the art is doing um, as an artifact, as a production, as a process, um, it allowed me to put up that feeling, to capture that feeling. And as I look back, it became this reflecting pool that I look back again, you know, through this process that I've engaged, through the work that's being produced. Um, how it allow me to kind of like let things go um, that, that I find is really wonderful about this, this process of creating the photographic work and how, how the work can actually allow me to also yeah, discuss issues like that to, to others like you guys you know, in terms of talking about the afterlife, uh, the passing, the intangible uh, of, of life, the ingressible, you know, the life passing. So yeah, so that's my work so far. How do you get into the art and health uh, industry? Is it because of your like your own personal life that mm. you just get into it? Mm. How did I start my arts and health practice? Okay, I think um, it is a combination of several factors. I think firstly was I think at the basis is that I myself experience you know uh, the benefits of my own process of making art because I think when I make art, uh, I do feel a sense of purging, a sense of letting go because I'm able to put my thoughts in visual form. In spatial form to communicate my intention. So I think that's the fundamental basis. So I guess the question that I ask myself through this is if I can benefit from this process, I'm sure other people would too. Right? So that, that was the second point, is that okay, maybe this thing that I'm, that I'm experiencing, I would like other people to encounter and experience it, to give people access to this opportunity at least. Right? Uh, and then somehow, I guess my dad falling sick um, changes the way I look at things. You know, I think at that point I was also questioning what art can do for us. You know, I think uh, I guess I wanted art to be something more than a beautiful piece of work that sits in the gallery. 
So I was talking about my involvement in Arts and Health, the reasons. Uh, I believe uh, my journey, my encounter with my dad's sickness when he felt sick uh, also had an impact in terms of, so I think it became a push factor right, in terms of why I want to go into health. Right? I think because, I mean, it was not taught, it was not something that I considered consciously. Right? It's just how events in life kind of unfold because my dad had got a neurodegenerative disease. So it was true that, you know, by sharing with my artist friend that somehow that one thing led to another and I was asked to, I was asked if I'm interested to be involved in an art project in the hospital. You know, and then I said, okay, I'll try. You know, I go to the hospital and I was supposed to work with a Parkinson support group. And at that point when I approached that project, I was working from the perspective of doing art intervention in the hospital rather than contextualizing it within arts and health. And I guess when I went into the project, I was doing my preliminary research that was how I kind of like tripped on the notion of arts and health and you know I have started to realize that wow there's so many things that are out there that people are doing in arts and health and I also questioned like what do we have here and then I went into the project and as I go into the project I also start to realize that the hospital is a different kind of place right? um, and as an artist I went in uh, I was confronted with the question of what can I do here what do I need to know how do I conduct facilitate the whole session, you know. And I guess that I became very interested in the notion of arts and health because I got to know arts and health as a field through this work. And that's where the whole world of arts and health opened up. And I guess there were trigger points, you know, that there were things that I was really thinking about, which I mentioned earlier in terms of me realizing the cathartic process, me wanting to share with others this benefit, right? And also my dad's condition uh, and also chancing upon arts and health. And I think it's all these factors they somehow came together at some point in time that also got me to think about what art can do for society. And I think that became the motivation in terms of driving 